Let's get, get, get it. What it do, people? I go by the name of DJ912. I'm in the building with my boy Schmicky Smurf. What it do, playboy? What it is, what it is. It's your boy DJ Schmicky Schmicky Smurf, man. I'll let your boy, man. Good gosh, you taking no Facebook at me, you dig? All the time, man. And today we going over how the self-improvement combats anxiety, anxiety and depression. Yes, sir. So this is studio talk for the day. Uh, we as creators go through it a lot, whether people know it or not. You know what I'm saying? Different ups and downs and li listening to different uh, critiques from different people. Trying to get to a point where, you know what I'm saying, we feel like we're effective. You right. know what I'm saying? Or successful. Whatever that definition means to you. But before we jump straight into this thing... What we gonna do is um, we gonna go through and we gonna give you the uh, definition for depression and anxiety, Fact. so y'all understand what we talking about, and then we gonna get straight into the talk, man. So, my boy, what's good, bro? What's that definition over there? The definition of anxiety: the intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about and fear about everyday situations, fast heart rate. Rapid breathing, sweating, and a feeling of being tired may occur. And um, the definition of depression is feeling of severe despondency or dejection. Now, despondency means <laughs> uh, pretty much uh, low energy, if, I'm, if I recall it right. The blah feeling. The blah. Don't be um, wanting to do nothing out here, man. I felt that before. Shit, we all felt that before. Mm hmm that come with just everyday life, not even just being a creative. But we're going to give it to y'all from the point of view that we understand it all, man. We hope people out there, you know what I'm saying, connect. And while you tune in right now, man, make sure you hit that like button, share, and hit that notification button. So every time we drop something, y'all know what's going on. Okay. So uh, the word despondency is a state of low spirits caused by a loss of hope or courage. So I know we all understand that. And so that's depression. And despondency right. is the word for the days. Despondency. Despondency. So let's get into it, man. Yeah, man. Uh, depression, anxiety. How have you? Uh, I know we all felt it, but how have you uh felt it, dealt with it, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, with anxiety, man. I, I coming up, I was the only child. So yeah. one thing I know about anxiety is most of the time it occurs when you're in a situation that you're not familiar with. Familiar with. Correct. And the fact that a lot of us, especially people that live in the country, have not been exposed to different scenarios as far as like city environments, other cultures, you know what I mean? Different type of work environments because we only have certain types of jobs where we're from anyway. A lot of us deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. You feel what I'm saying? Indeed, my brother. Indeed. So I feel like I can ha I can handle my anxiety a little better now because it came to a point of uh, self-reflection. Because when you alone, you don't have as many distractions, so you can, you know, what I'm saying, somewhat kind of analyze yourself, and then you will ask yourself, "Why am I feeling nervous right now? Why am I feeling afraid?" Yeah. So once I started asking myself that question on why I why I was feeling nervous, scared, my heart started racing, I started. Somewhat coming up with my own conclusions on how I can combat it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you saying, so when you when you first experienced anxiety, probably when you went to college. Nah, man. When I was a kid, bro, like I used to be a nervous fucking wreck, bro. <laughs> yeah. Excuse my language. Nervous wreck because it's like what grade age <laughs> age range that you really noticed it. I know because with me personally. I didn't realize I had certain things of anxiety until later on in life. I was like 20-something mm. before I realized when I was a teenager, like middle school-ish, a lot of the shit I was dealing with was anxiety. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know it because um, I had palpitations. I had oh. all that shit. I had all the signs of it, but I just thought it was something, you know what I'm saying, that I was feeling. And every time I went to the doctor... They was like, we can't find that room. I'm like, bro, I know I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. come to find out later on, you know what I'm saying? That could have been linked to something else, but a lot of that stuff was brought on strictly by anxiety. Mm. So so you would say, like, later on in life, like, how old? 
I was probably dealing with anxiety in middle school, but I didn't realize until I was like 25, 26. Oh, so that's when it was hitting you heavy. It, it not only was it hitting me heavy, but I was going through so much, and I'm a nerd, so I like researching everything. Mm. And so when I went to research on certain stuff, it was like anxiety, depression. Even then, I didn't, I wasn't fully aware of like what it was. I just knew a definition for it. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't until after when I really had to deal with it was when you know the little breakup situation happened. Oh, you yeah, know, both of y'all was involved in that shit. Yeah, so yeah. when that that situation happened, I went back to work the next day. The counselor pulled me to the side. And she was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, nothing wrong with me. I'm cooling, man. I'm just, you know, in my little zone. And she kind of looked at me. She was like, I'll talk to you later. There were other people around. Mm -hmm. So she called me back to the office. And it was her and another council lady. And I'll never forget that shit. And they pulled me to the side. So we get in the room. Probably about big as this room right here. Oh, snap. Probably about big as this room right here. And um, she was like, you and that girl broke up, huh? And I was like... Huh? And I was like, yeah. I was like, how you know I ain't saying that? How you acting? And I was like, what I mean? And she was like, no, you're not. You be going around flirting with everybody. You be talking to everybody. We be having fun days. And then you come in here like this. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, she called me on my shit. And what she said was, you never let nobody get that close to you before. And so mm -hmm. that's why you don't know what you're dealing with right now. Right. And I had to walk out the room because of, like, everything went to coming. And then from that point, we talked every day, you know what I'm saying, for a while. She gave me a little workbook, whatever. I kind of flicked the workbook off, and I was like, man, I ain't finna do this shit. Like, that's some bull, you know what I'm saying? Because I was working at the prison at the time, so I was like, that's some inmate shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't fucking with it. Right. And um, lo and behold, the more I did the book, the little pamphlet that she gave me, and uh, I wish I still had copies of it, but it kind of made you put everything in in perspective and she was trying to give me these I was trying to give her these short answers not precise it was just I like this I want to do this and you know what I'm saying and she was like no that's not gonna fly like we need to know exactly when you're gonna do this how you gonna do this give me a plan to, you know what I'm saying and it wasn't until I started doing that that thing that I felt normal again like really putting things down on paper I, I, I like felt normal again in a sense of my thought process and then I went through some more stuff. And guess what I did? I went right back to the little workbook. Kind of got by myself. So, you so. Doing the exercising on the daily, and that's how I, you know. So, what helped you the most? Writing it down and speaking on it, or actually acting on what you was writing down? Because it sounded like she was giving you a to do list to somewhat keep your mind off of. Exactly. That's what, that's what it was. Yeah. Because she was like, um, so really writing it down made me realize what I wanted. Right. But actually doing it made me better feel better because I was working towards it. you know oh, what I'm saying okay. so not not only did I did I have dreams aspiration I wanted to do things it put those things in motion so when I start seeing these things come to fruition it made me feel better it, like it lifted a weight off my chest like like literally hmm. so like that part and then she was like instead of being in another relationship give yourself time to breathe I had never had nobody to tell me that and I was Almost 30 I was a little over 30 at the time mm. I don't even right at 30 Yeah I was right at 30 at the time So basically up to about the age of 30 You being like in and out of relationships In and out of relationships Back to back to back mm -hmm. to back And she was the first person to tell me Give yourself time to breathe And I was like for what? And she was like Because you need time with yourself You need to understand who you are You need to understand what you want Out of the next person Not only out of the person that you with But out of yourself mm -hmm. And so she was like Instead of Instead of getting in a relationship, you need to go get a dog. And I was like, go get a dog? I don't like dogs like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, the last dog I had hung itself and died. I don't really want another God dog. Damn, you know what I'm saying? No one, depressed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was shit. like, shit. I was like, hell, you know, I don't, you know, don't want to deal with that shit. R.I.P. the um, uh, Fido, man. No, you know Rocco was his name. Rocco. It was yeah, Tiger R. P. Pete. homie. Yeah. yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? I was like, she was like, so go get a plant. And I was like, go get a plant. She's like, you know how to plant stuff? And I was like, I've been around green thorns all my life. My great grandma, my grandma, my mama, auntie, my uncle, you know what I'm saying? I know how to grow stuff. I can grow anything. Well, go get you a plant. And so to this day, what you see outside, I got them two aloe plants out there. So mm -hmm. it was just those things got me to the point of she was not only does like when your mind sitting down idle like that, do you start wondering things that'll probably never happen or foolish stuff. 
You know what I'm saying? You can right. be using that time to be productive. So when you feel depressed or when you feel that that moment of just not wanting to deal with somebody, then you kind of got to, you know, go ahead and start shaking it off because the longer it is, you know, the harder it is to get up out of it. So that's what really got me on my path as far as, like, the mental health. Like, she really, she really said something that spoke to me. You know what I'm saying? And when she when she called it that day, it like it snapped something in my spirit. And y'all know we be on the whole spiritual tip. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was feeling some type of way. And when she said, you depressed, something clicked. Boop. And I was like, what? Uh, That's what took somebody to call it for you to fully recognize it. Yep. And not only that, I was talking to my pops one day. And I don't never really talk to him a lot. But he said the exact same thing. It, it took a point in time where somebody actually said something to him. That he realized what he was going through and he had to kick back out of it. But by then he had been going through it for a while. So that's a, so that sounds like an import an important catalyst for people like that are going through depression and anxiety. Like sometimes we need somebody to call us out on it. Like, bro, what's up? You good? Cause a lot of times yep. a lot of people around us are just let 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 you sit there and wallow through that bullshit. Yep. They know exactly what the fuck you've been going through. Yep. But they'll let you sit there and somewhat destroy yourself. Cause I kinda understand you don't want to fully engulf yourself with somebody that's down down because like the old saying goes, misery loves company. company yep. And at the same time, you don't want that energy bringing you down. Mm-hmm. But if you love this person and you know what I'm saying, you want to see the best form. The best you can do do is at least throw them the text. The face to face cool, but depending on their emotional state, because some people can be at a very sensitive state, and with you their emotions clashing, you tell them face to face what's going what's going on with them. That might take them over the edge. But see, too, mm-hmm. that, that that comes with um self reflecting and accepting things other people say. Right. I know a lot of people um don't take advice. Well, mm. especially when we dealing with the music stuff like we be doing, right? Like some people, you be like, "Hey man, that ain't that ain't it for you, or it ain't your time." Man, what the fuck you mean, bro? That, that, that hard. I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, no, nah, like that ain't you know that ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, you and your phone I told you to put the thing on vibrate, sir. Sorry. But um, like, if two people actually called it out to me, I'm part in the front way one take. When um mm, shout to Monte, Hey, he the one that part of part of the thing too was um actually writing the song. So when I wrote the song Vows, that was part of me getting out. That was part of the the whole look the pamphlet. Shout it, um you know what I'm saying the lady Miss Lida was telling me. Yeah, she was like, this, "You like to do music anyway? Go write a song about it." I ain't gonna write no song about it. But to be honest, like that shit came out so effortlessly. It was, it was, and I ain't gonna say flawless, cause I still hear ways I can critique it, but when it came out, peeing the pad, and I didn't have to sit down there and, uh, what word this is, or how I'm gonna make this, it was just like, it, it spilled out on the paper without me having to pretty much write it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that was part of my, um, that was part of my process too. Y'all can check the song Vials out, um, on all streaming services and platforms, man. You know, DJ 912 Vials, featuring my partner, uh, Evans Dixon, Fun Sway Monte on the beat, man. But, um, he, when he was making the beat, it was, it was at a point where we down there chilling, that's when he was staying in the air, and he making the beat, and I'm listening to him. Like, oh, that, that beat does, like, that beat does, man. He's like, man, this ain't, this ain't right. And I was like, I said, no, bro, keep making that beat. Like, keep making that beat. Like, crank that thing, and I turned it up, and I, and I was like, he had put the snares and the hi-hats in it. And it clicked on me what the song was at that moment. And I left because it was bringing that emotional state out of me again. Like mm-hmm. I was still in my in my depressive state and it was still like that that beat was pulling on me. And I said, bro, please send me that beat. Man, I ain't finna send you that beat. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna put it up with the one, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause we as producers, we deal with it all the, all the time. We get these beats and stuff away and people don't never put them or they'll record them, they'll never put them out. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, you ain't finna da 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 da. And bro had been working on a couple of situations at the time that I know of personally that I seen hand to hand. And I was like, bro, I'm going to drop the song. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I was like, man, just send me the beat. He sent me that beat later on that night. I think I wrote that song in like three hours. Maybe under three hours. And that's only because, you know, dealing with kids and, you know, just moving around. 
But it was probably like three hours it took me to write this song. It ain't take long at all. So how did you feel after you um finished writing the song? Man, I was relieved, bro. Mm. I was relieved and I put so much truth in the song when Shawty heard the song again, she said, I don't like that song. And I was like, me not saying Somebody no names to it. She was yeah. like, she was like, I don't like that song. And I was like, wow, oh, cause you talking about me. And I was like, but I ain't say no names. Hit and she was like, she's like, I don't care. You talking about me. And I was like, yeah. how did you pick that out? And like she knew, like she knew it was about her. But I think too, that was, that was a token of me saying, that was a token of me vowing to never let myself get in, to that to that state again because it was like I vowed to never fall in love again I vowed to get this money so falling in love was the state that got me there but understanding what the love was was, was what really mm. like kind of got me down but it's like okay no matter who I love from now on out, I'm not getting back down to that point so that's that's what vows is about the, the, it's titled vows because I'm vowing to myself you know what I'm saying to always put self first Fact. in a sense you know what I'm saying I vowed to never fall in love again I vowed to get this money I vow to never let Cupid hit me on busting back with no conscience. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, nigga, you hit me again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just fire back because I don't, I don't ever want to get to this state no more. And for like a year, I kind of protected myself from just even falling in love with a chick. Just like, you know. So if we was to say, what say what are like some of the main triggers for anxiety and, and depression? Life what shit would, Yeah like But that's vague though like, that, You know what I'm saying Being a black man in America nigga. <laughs> Shit <The> Message <laughs> That shit is like And two I'm gonna get I'm gonna put this name back on you now I ain't gonna keep talking about myself But Two I was going through a lot As far as um, The kids You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. Without going into further detail I was going a lot with the kids we had broke up. I was at a point where I wasn't really, I ain't gonna say in love with myself, but not liking where I was in life. You know what I'm saying? And then coming to the realization that I'm the common denominator, no matter who I was with, no matter where I was going, no matter what I'm doing, I'm the common denominator. So I have to do something for me to get myself to a point where I'm in love with myself or I'm in love with the place I'm in. Right. So just dealing with all with all that that was going on. I had wrecked the truck again. I hadn't wrecked the truck three times at that point. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm dealing with all that in a in a melting pot of probably other little, you know what I'm saying, little issues in the relationship between this person and that person. Yeah. And and she just all kinda it kinda cannonball. And it was too late by the time I realized it. But um, when 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 Monte was making the beat, I was doing some melody or something. And he was like, "Man, you going through it?" I put that in the song. I said, "Dog, hit me up." I said, "Nigga, you going through it?" But damn, I'm feeling foolish, feeling like a nostril and blue this shit. Like, what oh. what <laughs> what happened was he was like, I was saying something, dog. I can't remember what I was saying in the moment, dog. But he was like, "Nigga, you going through it?" And that was his way of saying, nigga, you depressed. You're like, you falling off. And I was like, what? When he said that, that's when I left. So I said, your... man, just send me the beat. And I left and I flexed to the crib. That was your call right now. Yup. Mm. Yeah, kill. I think it takes, it, it probably don't take a lot, you know what I'm saying, with different individuals because everybody's mind state is different. Right. So it probably don't take a lot for certain, certain people, certain people to get to a depressive or feeling anxiety as it takes for other people. Right. And another thing too that I'm gonna say, stop saying, bro, you strong, you gonna make it. Talk to that person, talk man. Talk to that person, yeah. Please talk to that person because the person you think is strong probably going through the most ish in the world and they trying to get that weight off their chest. Oh, Sometimes yeah. them just saying it is, is, is help enough. Because like I said, when Monte actually said, boy, you going through it, and then I get to work and the, and the lady said, you depressed. Those two people, with it just being said that twice, it kind of bloop, bloop. And sometimes talking to parents ain't going, it's not going to get it, man, because psychologically they don't understand because they didn't have to deal with it in their childhood. Like we dealing with stuff that our parents haven't dealt with and 
my kids are gonna deal with stuff that I probably never had to deal with right. as far as a society as a total as a total. Cause like now is you know we sensitive about saying certain words and stuff. So mm-hmm. when, when we was coming out, you can pretty much say anything. You know what I'm saying? But we have to all take that into accountability. Like different triggers for different people. You know what I'm saying? What about you though, man? What 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 was the point where you say you knew you was depressed, but it kind of it kind of took somebody else to say like, hey, bro, you straight or you good? Or it was at a point where you just kind of realized yourself and you was like, hey, I'm tripping. I mean, I say my last. My last year of high school and my first year of college. No, 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 that year before I went, the year before my first year of college, because when I graduated high school, I sat out for a year, and then I went to college. Yeah. So during that time, time span right there, I felt like I was going through one of the worst relationships of my life. And granted, before that relationship, I went through what I would say would be one of the worst relationships in my Ooh. life. So two fucked up relationships, back to back. And they wasn't messed up in the sense of, okay, the, the women I was dealing with was, wasn't completely shit. Because they was young. You know, I was young. You know, I'm a teenager. They teenagers. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know any game back then, so I didn't know how to handle... You know what I'm saying Those You know what I mean My relationship at the time Like I would handle it now Yeah Cause I ain't, I ain't really Had no game like that All the game I was Bestowed with as a kid was Man you got to be a player You got to You know <laughs> what I'm saying You can't worry about these girls Or yeah. You the knight in shining armor You hold your woman down All that shit that, That's the only game I knew I didn't know that Oh man We We, we, gonna, we gonna smile upon that part yeah. right now Cause so, I think that leads us to a place Where we don't know yeah. And we try to figure it out on our own, but they two, they two uh, opposites, they two total opposites. Yeah. So it's like play on this side, but king on this side. Yeah. And it's like how in the hell you 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 mesh these two together, so that we got the most definitely expound upon that. But keep going. Like the first relationship, I was just coming out of a player phase. You know what I'm saying? I had girls, you know what I'm saying? I was. <laughs> I was slicking, yeah, slick a little athlete. <laughs> used to be out there hanging out all the time, going to all the parties and shit. I yeah. used to dance and shit. So niggas know me for rapping even back then. So shit, you know, I had moves. Yeah. So I get with old girl, hang up the player car, get on that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Made man shit. I'm taking care of the home now, basically. So, so hold up. After school, you saying 18, 19? I say with her, 17, probably 18. 16. 16, 17. 16, 17. Yeah. So you just cut the thighism off and just say, I'm going to be a straight yeah, up king. Yeah, I'm just going to be a straight up, you know what I mean, king to show I'm going to hold it down. It's just, this is a woman I want to marry. Get granted, now that I look back at it, like, bro, you too young for that shit, bro. You should have gave yourself time to breathe. Y'all could have, you know what I mean? I think my theory on that is I think it's better if we get married young. Hmm. If you got the same goals. Feel you. And and only because it builds a foundation that we still longing for right now that we trying to get to. We just built upon it about the you know what I'm saying the real estate investments and da 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 whatever. It get it it it, it catapults you to something. That's only if y'all on the same page though. Y'all got to be on the same page. I'm not saying everybody married a high school sweetheart, but I know people that's been married 20, 30 years, and it means something to them. Like just the respect level Like cause When we jumping out of different sheets With different people It's not It's not that we don't respect them We just trying to get our rocks off mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying But As you get older You realize To me Respect is everything mm-hmm. Like if you respect me I know I ain't gotta deal with a lot of stuff So that comes To respect and loyalty You know what I'm saying So when you jumping in and out of them sheets with different people, even if you say you with a girl, but you know Sam, what I'm saying? Well, where does that respect come from? I think it's called how we raised. And that's a totally different show. That's a totally different show. Because, like, even looking at the generation, I've dated older women, I've dated younger women, and the the variation between how they was raised and how the younger woman was raised, even how I was raised, it's totally different. Like, I lean more towards the, the older side, the elders, 
because certain things apply, certain rules automatically apply, right. certain things are automatically uh, it's a given. Like don't renege in spades. Like nigga, we we know this. You know what I'm saying. So in certain relationships with older women, certain relationships, and that's just mental status too. But if they haven't been hurt, they haven't been drugged, then you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's a certain type of respect. Now when it comes to the younger ones, psh, you got to bring them up to a level and not trying to discredit anybody or say anything bad, but. Their level of understanding of what respect is Or how you talk to people Or how you treat certain people Is non-evident It's like They oblivious to it You know what I'm saying So like pretty much When we came up I was raised You know what I'm saying By my grandma My mom was at work all the time And my daddy is an old head My daddy just turned 65 August 1st mm. So It's certain things That you just not finna do like, we're not even finna talk about it. This ain't up for discussion. Once I tell you one time, it's over with. You know what I'm saying? And so we have those morals and rules embedded in us versus when you got this younger generation. Oh, nigga, we just gonna do whatever. We gonna say whatever. We gonna do it like this. Like, but bro, even like, then, they, that's because a lot of their parents weren't there. My like point being, it's how, it's how you raised. Yeah. It's all about how you raising that respect level. But get back to that uh, anxiety, bro. Well, yeah, so... Like, yeah, I'm trying to hold down this relationship, you know what I'm saying? Be Mr. Faithful, you know, and I got used. Ooh. Been Bad. there. Got used. And I was getting disrespected to the point to where I'm trying to make the relationship work. But clearly I was being naive to the fact that she was pushing me away. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, man, I've been the you did I, what I'm I saying been, uh, I think we talked about that And I was confused When you said Too bad to bad I was like Wait a minute yeah. But we did talk about that Even yeah. got to a point To where it became A dangerous situation Because I'm gonna tell All my fellas out here Dun 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 If you dealing With your woman And it gets to a point To where the disrespect Can be somewhat Of a dangerous scenario To where y'all arguing Those arguments Can possibly turn Into fights other people Jim. outside of the of your relationship jump in the relationship and they take the side of the person that's really on the bullshit. <laughs> you feel me? So you kind of stuck in the rut because that's what I was going through. They, a lot of people taking sides, you know what I'm saying, the girl I was dealing with. Yeah. And it was just on some ride or die shit because that was like they family. I'm basically saying her family because really I ain't really want my family too much involved in my relationship yeah. anyway. You feel me? So I'm basically speaking on her family. So they was ride or die for her even though she was bullshitting. You feel me? Got over that. You know, so I was in a rut for a while. Stupid depression. I didn't want to go nowhere. I ain't want to eat shit. You know what I'm for saying? For how long? I say about... Before you start getting on to your... <sighs> Let me get up out of this rut thing How long did it take And what was the trigger That uh, that let you know That Hey you, you You somewhere else That you don't need to be I mean the trigger was Like she forced my hand No I'm just saying Before you realize Your trigger When you realize Like Like for me It was them saying Hey you depressed Hey you messing up So what oh, was that so trigger was For you trigger for Like for you to wake depression? up And I was like Hey what's going on To be honest, I don't. In that relationship, I didn't have no trigger. It was just I started focusing on sports. I started focusing on football. So focus. Yeah. yeah, I started training hard as far as like going to the weight room, going to practice. So it kind of got my mind off the relationship because, like I was saying, I got forced out of that relationship because I was trying to constantly make it work, even when we was on our. Take a break shit You know what I mean yeah. I was trying to Trying to force it to work But she pulled my hand Because During one of them On and off phases The last time She got pregnant What? She got pregnant We ain't gonna expound them on that You mm-hmm. feel me? So mm-hmm. you You know how that go mm-hmm. You feel me? That's a, little, that, that's a little juice <laughs> For this interview You feel me? Hey, I done, so boy, I done been there twice You <laughs> feel me? So <laughs> That relationship In my mind I said it's over with I ain't no more I, Ain't no comeback I Ain't no coming back from yeah, that I can't yeah. come back I can't see my way Around that shit So that was over with I was depressed Fucked up Cause in my mind I couldn't fathom How somebody could betray you 
to that, level. It to that level. I never experienced that before. Before that's why I say anxiety. That, that's, that's the respect thing that we talking about. That's a, that's what. Like think about it like this. I, I had to come to this realization to somebody one day, and I said, back in the day, women would have babies, and men didn't have to worry about if this my baby or not. Now on certain occasions, you hear about it. You know what I'm saying But you don't hear about it As much as you hear nowadays And we can get DNA tests So right. it's like You can't hide it now But back then They probably could Could have hid it For so many years You know what I'm saying Yeah Now it's to the point Where you can't really hide it We can go get a cotton swab Out of CVS though You know what I'm saying And, and find out But women try to They try to make you seem Like you the bad person I, I've been there before I ain't want to Get deep and in that, of course but. not all women Of course we know that But you know what I'm saying In the context of this Our scenarios You know what I'm saying you The know, type of women We were dealing with The Tatiana's Tatiana On the Lizzo You did But um So Like I was saying I got forced out of that relationship Started focusing on sports Started re Focusing back on my music You know what I mean Started re-recording music And rapping again then I started falling out from sports because I didn't really like the head coach of the football team. I just didn't like him like that. You feel what I'm saying? I just could not gel with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Indians, though. Fuck with the Indians. Just could not gel with the coach like that. Yeah. And um, so got into another relationship. How soon? I say probably, probably the middle my senior year That was my senior year You know what I'm saying So basically I got over The other relationship That summer Get, So two months Three months Nah I say about I probably got with Old girl probably In October So probably about So you still doing Like a three month Four month process Yeah but even then I was over that situation Because it was just So dead in my mind At that point Like yeah. I was over that I say about five Six months I'm out, I'm out that situation now. So so doing Doing that Little intermission In between right Yo, you coming out of your depressed state Was you going to football practice And exercising Focusing on sports School Yeah And then you got over that Yeah so And So focusing on something Another else. technique that cats need to use Go cold turkey Not the blue balls <laughs> <laughs> Not the blue ball I'm not saying don't go get it in <laughs> Go cold turkey On the woman That you're Breaking up with That you have broken up with Man They don't understand Boy they don't understand Block the number that. Block them on Facebook Delete all the photos Videos You feel me <laughs> All that Cold turkey bro Yup You know what I'm saying Out of sight Out, out of, of mind. mind You did it what I'm works. saying That shit works And I did that shit To a T And I got over that shit I had to do that twice Yeah That that was another part In my little situation When, when y'all was involved She told me she told me not to do any of that. And I was like, man, whatever. Oh, shit. And so, <laughs> kept seeing these posts on Facebook. Da, 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 da. She in another relationship. I'm still sour. And I see this picture. And I'm like, oh, this, this, is it? This engine? I'm like this? All right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And then after, when I deleted the Facebook or blocked her from my Facebook, deleted the phone number, that's when it kind of like, that's when it really took it to another level of me being, I'm cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Because it's like, you're not just going to say, I'm done with this relationship and me seeing this person with somebody else and me seeing this person smiling without me is not going to hurt me. And me, we as men just just think that that that's not going to trigger us. Like, it, it triggers you as well. You just don't know it. You right. know what I'm saying? And you act out and you lash out a different way. So... Like that was that was a gem. So you jump back into a relationship. Yeah, I can get back into this new relationship. And um you know, everything was blissful. Sweet, you know what I mean? Then again, I started seeing signs. Dun, you dun, know dun. what I'm saying? You start seeing love. Kinda hook up my fake but comments <laughs> on Facebook, you know, from from different individuals. Back then, you know, we used to have like uh, uh, little diaries and shit that we used to write in school. Like yeah. The composition book, like an English class. Uh -huh. Like we had a teacher that made us write, like I guess a passage every day and what was going on with us and shit. Uh -huh. So the chick I was dealing with at the time, she left a damn notebook at my house. 
Oh man, you read it. That's like going through phones nowadays. <laughs> read that. You bitch. went through a phone, went right? Through a phone, bro. which was a composition book at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so I was just just trying to see. I ain't. I wasn't even expect. I wasn't even looking for shit. Oh my god, I was just trying to see what she was talking about as far as like the art and shit. What you know what I mean? Yeah. Man, she writing all kind of monkey ass shit. Like <laughs> I seen a a passage where she was like, "Oh, I went to." Um, a certain spot to see him and I felt Ooh. bad about it. So I just left and called my boyfriend and now I just want to deal with my boyfriend now. So, oh, yeah. man. so that was just a couple of signs, but you know, I, 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 I kind of, I ain't check about it. Matter of fact, I did check about it. You feel what I'm saying? But I, I ain't check her like how I should have checked her. You soft checked her. I soft checked her. You feel me? And uh, so we moved on from that and Eventually, just got to got to a point of where man, Shawty started all out cheating. Um, it got to a point to where I found out a family member That's started the dealing. Star you talking about? Started dealing with Shawty, and which brought more family members in the shit. Somehow, the old relationship energy got intertwined into the new relationship. Yeah. That negative energy got intertwined in it and it just turned into a whole shit show. You (laughs) dig what I'm saying? To the point to where it's like, I felt like at that period of time in my life, everybody was against me. Like, I didn't know who the hell I could turn to because it just seemed like all the advice they was giving me was just advice to just like, turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. It ain't that big of a deal. What? And that gets on your nerves. Yeah, (laughs) you feel what I'm saying? It's not that big of a deal. And then Me as a person I look at you like my brother yeah. I look at Mario like my brother If A woman wants to fuck y'all over I won't I won't fuck with y'all either. You feel what I'm saying exactly. Especially if I know how she fucked y'all over Yeah I had people around me still Dealing with these motherfuckers <laughs> You feel what I'm saying <laughs> Yo. So it was like, damn, don't y'all see I'm trying to get over this shit? Y'all motherfuckers <laughs> is not helping me get over this shit. Yo, yo. You feel me? So eventually I went to college. Me and Shawty was still kind of on and off when I was in college. And Your that, first year of college. Yeah, first year of college, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The getaway, but I was still dealing with Shawty, you know what I mean? You weren't that far away from home either. Nah, I wasn't. And then some major shit hit the fan when I was in college between me and her. And I just told her one day, man, I, I just thought about it one day when I was lifting weights. Started looking at all them beautiful girls in the weight room and shit. You know, I realized where I was at. I ain't got to, I ain't got to go home if I don't want to. What? You feel me? I was just, I just hit her up and be like, you know what, man? I can't do this shit no more. Send her that text. I can't do it. And then when I sent her the text, she was like, why? I ain't even reply back. Cut off my phone, got my own workout bag, walking down the hallway, and I started smiling. And I said, shit, it's time to get to work. So you went to the gym? Went to the gym. I just started focusing on that, focusing on my school. Man, work. see, and I think I think that dealing with depression and anxiety is, is a key. Yeah. Because at certain points of time in my life, when I felt myself slipping back, I went straight to the gym. Like, for real. Like, exercising not only your mind, but your, your body. Like the body exists in three three separate well three together states. Right. Your mind, body, and spirit. You know what I'm saying? That's what they try to flip into the Holy Trinity, but we ain't gonna get into that. So mind, body, and spirit, you know what I'm saying? Your mind being is you know how you perceive things. If you're in a depressed state, your mind weak. You right. know what I'm saying? It's just like a muscle. You got the you got to flex that muscle. So, you know, with me writing you know, reading different things and you know how we was, you know, on the build and stuff at one point in time, just researching, researching, researching. It's like getting your muscle back up, right? So your your brain getting your muscle back right. Your body helps you relieve it. So when you lifting weights, when you when you running, you walking, you riding your bike or whatever, that that energy and motion, you know what I'm saying? It's like emotional is energy and emotion. It, and it helps so with it, your it, breathing. It comes it out. Yeah. It really helps with your breathing because one thing, one of the symptoms with anxiety, fast heart rates, um, uh, uh, hyperventilation, you're breathing fast, you about can't catch your breath. When you're exercising, you're learning how to control your breath more. 
So because you're observing that part of your body, when it happens to you out of nowhere, you would know what to do and you would have a better sense of control over it. You know what I'm saying? Fact. And I'm not saying go out there and be the next motherfucking Usain Bolt or Floyd Mayweather <laughs> or Michael or, Phelps. Know, Michael Phelps. Phelps. <laughs> nah. Just go just get a uh, go go take a time out. Take an hour or two out. Go out go for a walk. Do a couple push ups, a couple sit ups. Go to a gym. You never know who you might meet. You know what I'm saying? Just whatever you can do that's progressive and keeping your mind off what's keeping you depressed. Cause you do not want to wallow in depression, man. It's so hard to get out of it. So we we discuss key things that's gonna help you get out of it. It's exercise, writing it down, writing it down. Be more creative, like or find a plant or something to indulge your time in and focus on something else besides what got you into the depression or the or the relation or being depressed about the relationship. So we was talking about the relationship. Now we gonna combine all that and. Y'all kind of seen how it affected me musically with the song vowels, you know what I'm saying? Even with my beats, my beats became more dark. They weren't as vibrant. Mm -hmm. Um, My mannerisms, you know what I'm saying? When going around, people weren't the same. Like when I get to that state now, I cut everybody off. Like some days I just cut my phone off. It ain't but certain people. It ain't but certain people that, um, certain people that I would call or even talk to, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't an immediate family sometimes, you, you, your call is not going to come through, you know what I'm saying, for me personally. So those things, lifting weights, reading or writing, exercise, focusing on something else like a plant, a dog, or something else. Um, so how did it affect you m- musically at that time? <laughs> Dropping hits. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. When you it's always a hit out of depression. You know what I'm saying? When you in your feelings and you working on the craft, like writing or making music, that's when your best work tends to come out. You feel what I'm saying? And like you said, it just flows naturally. Like you ain't yeah. really got to think about it. It's just the first thing that come that comes to your mind. You writing it down, and it feels so good to be able to relieve that tension, man. Yeah. Cause like I found myself being so tight, like I used to really have to catch myself. Like you see how my shoulders are right now. Yeah. I had to learn to notice that and bring myself down and relax. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what smoking plays a major part in people, and people don't understand either. It's like why you smoke all the time? It's like not only are they depressed, they used to smoking like that. So when you when you when you smoking, weed helps release anxiety and depression. It does. The studies are there to prove it. The endocannabinoid system is one of the major neurotropic systems of the human body. So, my boy, just so try the gym on you. Go. Cannabinoids, weed, one of the main chemicals other than the THC. The cannabinoid chemical really affects the brains, the brain in ways that can really aid in your mental health. Yeah. For those who didn't, didn't know that. Yeah, so not only that, you know what I'm saying? Once you get on a daily routine, your own boy smoking every day, you don't know why they smoking, but why y'all smoking, y'all talking about different issues, with one, whatever. Everybody in the circle depressed. You know what I'm saying? And so like like really like once you see those signs, like uh being reclusive, being by yourself, being in like dark places sometimes, like I know that's one thing that triggered me. Like I bought the blackout curtains I kept my door closed I, Like just stuff like that Um, Not feeling yourself Low energy Can't think straight Um, Excuse me Can't think straight Things like that You dealing with something With the anxiety Or he said the, the breathing And different things like that Like learn who you are Learn your body So you can deal with those things And so you can come out of those states Or whatever And by all means Granted Smoking weed does have its good qualities, but it also has its bad qualities because you do not want to specifically use weed as a coping mechanism because a coping mechanism could lead to an even even greater depression. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. Because chemically you're not addicted to weed, but psychologically you can become addicted to that feeling of bliss to where you're not doing anything progressive other than getting that feeling from smoking weed. Exactly. So you're not working out, you're not writing, you're not making music, especially if you're smoking the indica strain, 
which a lot of people thinks is the gas. That's the one that has people kind of drowsy, <laughs> sleepy, laid back. <laughs> sleepy, hungry, lazy. <laughs> sleepy, hungry, lazy. So you're not doing shit. But, so you feel what I'm saying? So by all means, I'm not saying use that as a coping, full out coping mechanism. But if you need it, you know what I'm saying, hit the, hit the square sometime to get your mind right to go chop it up. As long as you being productive with it and it's not affecting your money, handle your business. Most definitely You know what I'm saying Just throw that in make, make sure it ain't affecting that bag boy You know what I'm saying So Like those things So creatively You said you made hits Did you make any songs Or any verses About those situations Poems Oh yeah Something we ain't never heard Yeah I, I, It's like I do it subliminally like, And a lot of my songs that I did You know what I'm saying Put those messages out I haven't yeah. released them yet Probably a few that people can go on my SoundCloud Stop and release. Stop holding them. back, brother. It's a method to the madness. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Stop holding back. Hey, man, so. if y'all don't know, I'm talking to my boy, DJ Schmicky Schmurf, man. My partner, he's on my, uh, she on the Faded Hook. You on the, um, what's the other track? Freak, uh, Freak, Freak about, about you. you. Like, when it comes to melodies and hooks and verses, my boy, my boy, fire with it, man. Make sure y'all check his SoundCloud out, yeah, man. Man, appreciate it, appreciate For real. it, man. Yeah, man. So one thing about it, man, music is life, man. My whole family does it. So to me, it was it was only natural for me to indulge in music. You know what I mean? I love it, you know. And I'm not saying everybody can just do music to cope because everybody has their different different things that they like. Most definitely. Find out what you like. And engage in it Like even if it's going fishing Bowling Yeah Like something without What made you depressed So if it's with your relationship Go by yourself Like yeah. go bowling by yourself Go fishing by yourself Go play ball with the homies Or something Like something like To do, to do that Like make sure You know what I'm saying Not saying do it Completely solo Like you can do it In a camaraderie type situation But you can't bring That energy there So like when I go places like that I cut my phone off like you know what I'm saying Because I'm getting away At that point in time Right and So yeah man Most definitely Most definitely you Got to keep those Negative vibes around you Don't Kick it with people That's gonna bring up Nothing but bullshit Gossip to you Every day You know what I'm saying Because it's a shame How I might You know what I'm saying Be in an area And I don't mean The air hustle I can't help it I got good hearing You know and oh, yeah. I notice people's Conversations And it's just Nothing but gossip Negative gossip They dogging somebody Bashing somebody They're dealing with a relationship That they know is toxic to them But like You know what I'm saying Like us They being naive to it And they try to keep it going If you're dealing If you're in a situation That's leaving you depressed Leave that situation man Most definitely Don't Cut it off Cut it off It's not gonna happen nothing to cut that off You feel me I ain't gonna lie, it is something to cut off, boy, but it's, it's it's hard to get back. The longer you in it, the longer it's gonna take. The longer yeah. you in your depressive state, the longer you you fighting those those demons, those issues, the longer it's gonna take you to get out of that state because you're gonna become so far lost to a point where you can't come back from it. Right. So, like, please do see, help, excuse me. Make sure, like, if you can't find a homeboy, a parent, or somebody to talk to that's going to give you some real good advice and you know for yourself what good advice is, go find you a counselor. Go find you somebody with the professional help to pull certain things out you. Because I also learned um, just with the self-improvement part is learning that certain situations back in the day, like being cheated on, the loss of loved ones, it makes you kind of hide a part of yourself and you'll never be yourself, you know what I'm saying? If that affected you at 18, 19, whatever, you won't be the same person at 25 or even 20 until you deal with those past relationships. So that that stunts your human growth, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so you want to grow as a human and evolve as a person because that's what we're here for, you know what I'm saying? So, like, find somebody that's going to say, hey, what about this? Has this ever affected you anyway? Like, it's a certain situation. To where I didn't understand it But When people act like that Around me I don't deal with them Because it reminded me Of a certain someone And the situation That I went through That I don't even Put myself in that ring The moment that person Starts speaking like that The moment that person Starts acting like that I, I did it It could be a good person And I had And it's It's nothing wrong With that person 
You know what I'm saying? But as far as my experience, I didn't experience that part of life. I'm and I refuse to experience that part of life again. So like it's just like, hey, I done dealt with you before, I done dealt with that personality trait. You know what I'm saying? It's like sixteen type of personalities, sixteen different types of personalities. I took a personality test yesterday. It opened my eyes up about a lot of stuff. But like learn those certain characters that you wanna be around, that you wanna deal with. Like for real, for real. Like yeah, that's man. that's what you need in life. Be open, cause when you find yourself closing your, closing yourself off to the world, that's when you're realizing you're not. That's when you need to realize that you're not growing. You cannot Facts. completely close yourself off to such a vast world. There's so much to do and learn out here for you not to want to explore. Just the fact that you don't want to explore something, you should ask yourself like, damn, why don't I want to explore? Yeah. Why do I just want to? Go to a job that I don't like. Why do I just want to deal with people that don't make me? Feel, that only makes me feel like shit every time I get around them. Yep. Why do I feel like I always have to hit the liquor store to kind of binge and get drunk? Basically, become another person to cope with these fucked up feelings. You know what I'm saying? That I'm, that I'm going through. Recognize it and fight back. Be open. Yep. And when I say world too, I mean your circle. I don't mean just yep. say. The, the universe The world I'm saying And your immediate circle too All I right. think too um, That's how people become You know These super alcoholics You know Weed heads And start smoking crack It's yeah. because you're going Through a depressed state And you don't understand it But it's getting to a point Where this buzz Got me Where I need to go You know yeah. what I'm saying It's It's got me Almost feeling Somewhat normal And so that become A normalized level And you got to be you got to be wary of that You know what I'm saying We all go through things Just realize what you're going through And like Hey man Like you said Fight back You know what I'm saying There's many different ways To fight back There's many different hotlines You can call Just do your thing man You know what I'm saying And keep pushing It's that thing of Keep your head down And keep going Like you might have a point On the wall You're trying to get to And you know where you want to go at in life You just got to keep your head down And keep working to it man and Once you achieve one goal then start another one And don't make your goals So long in between Oh man I learned that And that has helped me So freaking much Is to make shorter goals Versus longer goals Sure you had right. your Five year plan But you need to have A three month plan A six month plan A seven month plan And keep working like that mm -hmm. That way once you Accomplish those goals You give yourself Self gratification You give yourself This energy like Oh boy I did this What's the next one Let me go do this one Fact. You know what I'm saying And it might not take you As long to get to the next one As you thought it would And 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 that's another thing About writing it down And like really Even me talking about it Right now It's a lot of stuff I'm finna start implementing Again back in my life And I'll make sure I stay on it So And creating a schedule Not necessarily a schedule But certain types of habits Cause like Working out and stuff Like once you fall out It's so hard to get back in Even though you don't be doing that You just got to find The the, the mindset To even go in the gym right. So like like Yeah man Create different things around you That make you not Fall back down To those points Those certain trigger points That little lap That circuit you need to run uh, Excuse me To keep going And by all means Be willing to forgive yourself Because one thing about life Jim <laughs> You gonna fall off you gonna be on this, you know what I'm saying? This progressive high road, everything gonna be working. You're getting over your situation, and then sometimes you're gonna get that back pedal. It's okay. You can still rise above it. You can still stand up. Everybody falls, but can you get back up? Jim, complete Jim. Ain't gonna lie, that's something I need to hear today, too. They're like, hey, this year right here for me, 2019? Oh my. God, bro. My lord. Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, this shit started rough and got progressively worse. And then I just had to realize you ain't got it that bad, bro. Don't. You can get back the way you was. You can get mm -hmm. back to the things that you had. Right. And there's like certain mindsets. Um, we were speaking on it before we started about me having just, I'm going to just put, put it out there the car for instance, the truck for instance. I wasn't working at that point in time. I probably did. Two, three months off Without me working I was just hustling the music Doing whatever And I felt like that's I know that's my purpose It's how to make your music Or your passion Lucrative enough So you don't have to keep working For somebody else Right So In the midst of that I finally get this job I know what type of money I'm finna make And it's gonna be straight I'm gonna be home at a certain time I can You know Deal with the music And The day I get the job I'm on my way back From Savannah Which is like an hour away from me and my motor blowing my truck, bro. 
bro, that shit something you know, on a downward spiral to it wasn't Lord, like like I was telling them, I bought my first car at seventeen for five hundred dollars. It was a nineteen nineteen ninety eight Regency. It was a nineteen eighty one model. Big boy like Cadillac model, but it's an Oldsmobile. I bought my first one for five hundred and I hadn't looked back since. So ever since I've been seventeen, I had my own way of transportation, my own everything. And then when that motor blow, psh, everything stopped. Oh, you thought you had this saved up, or you thought you had this right. Boy, your kids going through this over here. If everything just went to whooping back around in that bowl, that when I whoop, side back away from everybody. Oh, this was going on over here. This was going on over him. Hey, this is a most definitely gym. Stop dealing with everything at one time. Facts. One thing at a time. So if you got a baby mama issue, hmm. deal with that baby mama issue. Don't deal with that baby mama issue, your relationship issue, and another issue at the work. Don't do that. Don't do it at the same time. You setting yourself up for a complete, honest failure. Facts. It's not gonna be able to do it. So take that one situation. Um, I got you in a box. This is what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna brush you off. That's you. You know what I'm saying? That's day one, week one, however long it take. Then I'm going to deal with the next issue. Hey, this is what this is. Da, 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 da. Exit out. Boom, boom, boom. I got you handled. And the same thing, even when you're dealing with finances, you might want six, seven bands. Don't do it and say, I got to get six bands. I'm going to get six bands. Go hit a leak and get locked up. Yeah, and it, it, shit ain't, it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? Get locked up for 60 years. Exactly. <laughs> you you finna get five years for six bands. Like, it ain't, it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying? So take it in, in, in a day at a time. You know what I'm saying? Drink from many different cups. And that's why we've been just straight up scheming on different, not even scheming, just putting together different plans and ideas of multi-purposes of income. Like, just like, and you need those people to talk to that's gonna put you on game. If ain't nobody in your circle putting you on game, get your ass out of that circle. That's just yeah. one thousand percent. Right. If, if you present an idea to your clique and they just ugh, hit you with the highs, man. Like, boy, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you about. Boy, you silly as hell, boy. That shit ain't gonna work, what? Nah. Like, real yeah, talk. Nah. X them out, cause they ain't for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah. Um, T D J said it best. Um Oh, uh, what is it? Comrades, confidants, and constituents. Comrades, those are the, confidants, and constituents. Those are three people you're going to have in your life. Um, I can't remember how he put them, but pretty much you got you got a for right now, homie. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's just straight for right now. Like, when something hit the fan, they're going to be gone. Like you, you got that. You know what I'm saying? Then you're going to have your... Uh, then you're going to have another one that's going to be, like, down for the cause. So, if getting to, I don't know a good situation, I'm putting on thinking all negative situations. But if we got a, if me and me and my boy Smurf come up with a cause to go get 10 girls for one night on some silly shit like that, he the homie to go call to do it, you know what I'm saying? He mm. gonna ride for that. But if I say, hey boy, let's go buy 10 cribs in 10 years and let's make a real estate business, he ain't down for that. Like you gonna you gonna have you gonna run into certain people like that, and then you got your confidant. Your confidant is your supreme. Your confidant is the person that you can lay beside, talk to, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or your confidant just be the, the person that you know is gonna be your a your ace boom coon, your ace in the hole. Hey boy, I'm down. Boy, I need a G. Boy, let me. Can I get it? You know what I'm saying? And he get to you. You ain't gotta pay it back. Or he get to you and say, "Hey, bro, just give me back half of it. Whenever you get on your feet, you straight." And he don't press you about that stuff. You gonna rarely have people like that. So the confidence yeah. is the people that's, uh, you know what I'm saying? For you, go watch that sermon. It's TD Jakes, and I think it's labeled like that: comrades, confidence, confidence. and constituents. I think it's clips of it, but um, my mama bought me the book for Christmas one year, and I read the whole book. And that was one of that's a man. That book is a that book is a gold gem, mm -hmm. for real, for real. And even though I don't be on the you know what I'm saying the Christian stuff like that, but <coughs> those blessings, thank you. Those ideas, those, and I heard somebody else say it a different way. They didn't say comrades, confidants, and constituents. But you have those three type of people in your life, and you got to know how to deal with them. And once you can put those people in that category. Like even in one of my my moments the other day, I had to say it out loud to somebody that I was speaking with. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, what are you to me? What do you want to be? You know what I'm saying? What is your place in my life? You know what I'm saying? 
And then they hit me with like a brick wall. I was like, huh? Like, what kind of question is that? I'm like, listen, everything got a category. I need to know how to deal with you. What's that? You know what I'm saying? We're going to put it down like this. And that's just growing as a person. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own category where they think so or not. I know this a homeboy I can call and get a verse done. I can get a hook done. I know this a homeboy I can get a beat from. If I got a beat block, I know I can go get my boy Mario. I'm like, hey, bro, come help me out. And once we collab, our beats always be stupid crazy. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like you have certain people you can call at certain times. Hey, and even, even you know what I'm saying? Everybody got that little one. Slide in the DM, and I'm finna slide through, you know what I'm saying? Hey, girl, you up, you know what I'm saying? And oh, come on. Do, 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 you know what I'm saying? Everybody got that one. <laughs> Two thumbs up, Cisco and Eva and shit, you know what, what I'm saying? But learn how to deal with those people, man. That That's, that's man, this conversation even helped me, even in my, my points right now, where I'm at in my life right now. I ain't gonna lie, this whole conversation is, like, very, very beneficial. Mm. Like, for real, for real. I'm all like linking up with your partner, boy Jay Gassy. Smiggy Smurf, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, kill. So, top three things you need to do to start coming out of your depression. Mm. Write down what's wrong with you. Have that self reflection. Act on progressive things that you like doing and that you want to do. And three, Hmm. Stay consistent. Continue on the journey. Don't if you fall off a little bit, forgive yourself and get back on the horse, man, and keep going. You know? Because the worst thing you can do in this life is the is to give up. Cause granted, when you when you give up, life goes on. But it's up to you to want to keep going with it. It's most definitely Jim right there, Playboy. I would say, um, like you said, vision. I would say one of my key things was vision. Right. I know where I wanted to be. I know where I want to go. And I know where I'm at. So even though where I'm at is not where I want to be, you can't get completely down. And so, like you said, forgive yourself. Work on small goals that's going to get you to a point the way you can maneuver. Right. You know what I'm saying? Maneuvering is is key, especially us, we in the country. Everything we from, especially when we talk about city life, we're an hour and a half, two and a half, three hours away from it. You know what I'm saying? In either direction. But so your vision will, will help you set your goals if you don't know what you want to do Create a vision for yourself Understand who you are What you like to do What you love What you want to do And you know if, if it's music Everybody ain't meant to write Everybody ain't meant to produce There's plenty of other jobs In music You know what I'm saying That can be done I know some people That's very well connected But instead of them Being managers Helping people marketing They still do music It is what it is So vision I think vision and purpose is the same thing. So then we're going to say, I'm going to say exercising. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that I constantly do when I feel like I'm in that state. So exercise to just release the energy. Like I said, if if we're going to break down the etymology of emotional, um, you know, it's energy and motion. Mm -hmm. So energy and motion. So when you're frustrated and you need to to release something, the moment you put that that energy Mm -hmm. in motion, you get to moving you know what I'm saying? It releases itself. You don't have to do anything. Facts. So, it's two things. The number two, not only exercising, but getting in the sun. We as melanated people, we create certain vitamins when we in the sun. And those vitamins that you need to help get out of depression, period. Especially vitamin D. That's exactly what it is. That's why it's called sunny D. You get vitamin D from the sun. Right. So, with that being said, so vision, exercise in the sun, and three, I will say again, write it down. Write write not only down what you want, write down how you're gonna obtain what you want. What are the steps and goals? What are the what are the processes or processes that you will take 
to get there. So if you wanted to go get a record collection, what would you start to look? Right. Who are the people you need to contact? If you got five friends that don't nobody know how to get records, who who you gonna deal with? Are you gonna always buy off Amazon? <laughs> Excuse me, or are you gonna go to eBay? Um, or are you gonna go to a pawn shop or, or are you gonna go to a flea market? You know what I'm saying? Those are things that you have to, you know what I'm saying, process. So if you want a hundred racks in the bank, you can't say, I'm gonna work for Fufu Lay all day and I'm gonna get a hundred bands in the bank. Right. It's not going Mathematically it's not going to happen like, I'm just dealing with bills and everything else Mathematically that shit is not going to happen If you like me you got to deal with child support too So that hey that shit is Is beyond me If you can do it call me I need that information Facts. You're not going to do it like that You know what I'm saying So if you want X amount of dollars in the bank You might need a partner You might not need a partner Don't feel like you codependent on somebody else To get to where you need to go just do what you got to do You know what I'm saying If it's working This 9 to 5 Or getting this certificate Or getting this type of criteria You know what I'm saying Go ahead and do it Or it might just be Getting the hell out From where you at You know what I'm saying Like Anything could be the case But write it down And make sure It's Make sure it's down To a point To where you know How to get to that process That way if you ever Fall off your rock and You know what I'm saying In the middle of your grind You're coming back up You can look at that paper or like these vision boards that I got on the wall You can't see them right now But on this vision board I got questions for a movie idea mm-hmm. Or questions for a documentary Like things that I want to ask And mm-hmm. it's like 20 of them You know what I'm saying On my vision board over here If I get up and I look at it Because I got to look at this wall Every day when I'm getting dressed I see certain things Like hey what you doing today And I got it marked out You know what I'm saying I'm doing this thing consistently every Every week You know what I'm saying Week in and week out One of them is checking my bank account Making sure I ain't spending Excess money on BS The other one Is making sure I'm doing Something every day To get me closer to my goal So mm. Like vision boards help You know what I'm saying If Especially if you're visual I'm a visual learner You know what I'm saying So that That's key Please figure out how you learn I'm a visual learner And I'm wow. audio So that's how I end up Learning how to play piano Or it Was just like Looking at somebody Oh, this is what you did. Well, why this work? Maybe if I do it like this, does this work? That's how I learned how to play piano. You know what I'm saying? No one person taught me between YouTube, watching certain people influential around me play, like my Uncle Johnny, my grandma. Like, just even sometimes if I close my eyes, you know, my grandma's gone, rest her soul, I can see her playing certain songs. Mm -hmm. And I can see her hands, even though I wasn't even paying attention as a kid back then. So visualization to me is, is very key. It's a good, 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 good point. Dope. So we done? I think that's it, man. We probably can expand on a little bit more in a later discussion, but so far, man, that's about all True. I got for it right now. And creatively, too. Oh, man, I had to tell myself this. Stop listening to everybody. Oh, yeah. So even with the music thing, we get critiqued a lot. So mm-hmm. even when you're going through your depression or whatever, you're going to get still critiqued in your music because don't nobody care where you at in life. Certain people don't care. They're just doing what their job is. And so, in the words of Miss Badu, I'm sensitive about my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> hey, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, when, you, when somebody's critiquing you, yes, you have to take that opinion. And hopefully, it's a good opinion. You know what I'm saying? Or it might be a bad one. But either way, Sometimes that bad opinion could be a good opinion. Perfect example, we went to the city that time and we went to Old Boy Crib and he was like, man, that sounds like an Uncle Lou song. And I was like, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's nothing else. That's exactly what it was. And he thought I was like going for this this other extremely different sound. And I was like, no, Uncle Luke was the inspiration behind this whole sound that I'm doing at this point in time. So yeah. he might have thought that he was like doing me a favor by saying, hey, this bad, you need to do something else. But you kind of gave me reassurance that I put that song in that demographic for a reason. I That's what I did. That's what I catered it for. So like, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, man, when you're being creative, take critiques. Don't let it overwhelm you, man. And if you feel yourself getting to a point of too many critiques or too many... Uh, too many outside influences 
Back away from it, man. Then yeah, reset. Man. So this week right here, perfect example. I ain't touched the keyboard all week. I haven't. Like I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'm listening to different songs. I'm still engineering, but I ain't touched the keyboard. I made three beats. Liked all three of them, couldn't track them out because I didn't understand what I was doing at that point in time. Like mm-hmm. I liked the music, but it was like it's a blah moment. So I'm not gonna force the blah moment. You know never what I'm force it. Never force it. So every song that I have forced, I've never like I can honestly say that. I've never liked and if I don't like it, I don't put it out. Bruh. Oh, I lost it and do the hard drive for you. Back up off me. No. <laughs> no, no. Please back up off me. Please, please back up off me. So, creative advice and then we about him. When you're going through depression and you and you in creative state, you're trying to make an album, you're trying to make a song. EP. I mean, me personally, because I don't really make beats. I'm just like a vocalist. Like I just lay down my vocals on tracks when it comes because I rap and I sing. I say, I say, keep your equipment near you because during those periods of time. Even though I didn't necessarily feel like making music, the fact that I had my microphone right beside my bed where I slept at, it was like a reassurance in my mind to where I just get up and grab it and go. You know what I'm saying? True. So even if I ain't feel like it, I just told myself, like, you know what, I'm just give myself a minute to at least try to go go through a beat, freestyle a little bit. If I ain't feeling it, I'm going to back off. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's part of getting it out though, yo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I say keep your craft near you. Whatever you like to do, keep a positive, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a, a indicator nearby. Like if you like running, keep your shoes right there as soon as you open your eyes. It's like the first thing you see. If you want to go to the gym, keep a picture of a damn weight room people working out, a poster right there, you know what I'm saying? Just to give you that reassurance. Mm-hmm. Whatever you got to do to Somewhat Manipulate your mind To stay In that Positive Progressive state Do it You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying That's what's happening bro yeah, That's man. what's happening man And we done linked up again Another studio session This is session number two You did You know what I'm saying So Hey man Follow them links below Jay Gasky Is my boy A.K.A. Smiggity Smizzer You know what I'm saying I go by the name of DJ912 You can find all our music online man Mm -hmm. Um, Especially anything that we did together You know what I'm saying Everything is up online On all streaming services Just google me I got Beats on streaming services as well Uh, I think that's about it man Be on the lookout for some new music Cause we do got some heat in this thing And we gonna drop it And we gonna keep Giz on You know what I'm saying Hopefully I got that sound effect thing down Cause we was dropping some Hands <laughs> in his Facts That ain't You feel me Facts But uh Hey man we out of here We been in here too long anyway Hey man what's the next topic for next week hmm. Or whatever day we link up I wanna talk about relationships man Here you go You stay on this relationship thing Yeah cause it's like Where we from That's about all People have other than work That's about all they have Is a relationship So True. that leads to A lot of stress Mm-mm-mm. Most people don't have nothing. Think about it now Most people don't have Nothing else but Their job And a relationship In a relationship I don't have nothing To work toward They don't have a vision For themselves so Oh yeah Indeed Indeed Relationships that one might be a long one, y'all. Y'all gonna have to stay tuned for that one. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna two-part that one. Oh, oh, yeah. That one's gonna be deep because we be in some conversations I know some people don't want to hear or be even associated with when it comes to relationships, but I'm talking about, oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> for, for real. Y'all stay tuned, man. DJ9 Twitter Studio Talk Session 2. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. Peace.